Oh boy, I don't think I've ever rushed to make a video so quickly as when I read on Twitter, Frank Lampard could be coming back to Chelsea, baby. Oh, oh football gods, you are so good to us. You are so good. Like, and this is, this is like the best news any football channel's ever had because Frank Lampard is box office. Not for the same reasons that maybe some people think he's box office, but Frank Lampard is, for all intents and purposes, not the right guy to do it, but he is the right guy possibly for the interim, or he's also possibly the wrong guy. Frank Lampard needs to come in and get rid of some of his past habits. We know Frank Lampard is indeed a Chelsea man. We know indeed that Frank Lampard was not an Everton man, but we know that Frank was just sort of, oh, hi, Frank, at Derby. Although, you know, at the time, I feel like there was a bit of a, like, movement, and maybe that's what Frank is good at. Short-term movement, long-term inertia. While Chelsea are trying to get their new guy in, it could well be that Frank Lampard is the new Chelsea manager. A short stint, a time to maybe redeem himself, a time when he can not play with tactics. Frank, I'm begging you now, do not play with tactics. And when I say don't play with tactics, I mean play with tactics, but just don't play with them. Because when you went in at Everton, it was like, do we do three at the back or two? Do we do nine at the back or ten? Like, there were just too many times where Everton didn't seem clear on what they were trying to achieve in a game. And frankly, I, I kind of wonder, what's the difference between Frank Lampard and just any interim manager? Is this just something to win the Chelsea fan? Is there like a PR move in this somewhere? Is this basically Todd Bowley going, listen, I hear you, all right? I've watched James Alcott's uh, video where Lawrence McKenna suggests Frank Lampard. When I heard the name, I thought to myself, that rings a bell. Is that the guy that plays 4-4-3? And I got straight on the phone. I said, listen, old regime, new boss now, all right? You ain't, you ain't going to be going out under me in any short-term thing. And here's the great thing. I don't have to sack you if it's a short-term signing, all right? So if you sign for the short-term, I don't have to say I got rid of him. Unless, of course, it goes terribly. But I don't think it's going to go terribly. Frank isn't the kind of guy for it to go absolutely terribly. In fact, I think a new manager bounce is exactly the kind of manager that Frank Lampard is. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, does he have enough time to get his tactics employed and put into this Chelsea side before they play Real Madrid? Does Frank Lampard want to be on the bench for that first Real Madrid game? Or does he want to see how good they are and then go, maybe I'm good? Or is it that whilst Chelsea are looking for a long-term manager, someone who's short-term is a good face of the club, is indeed a Chelsea man, and someone who can come in and go, listen, you boys love me, Mace, I think it's a good idea if you stay he can have a few chats and a few ears. He can alienate a few people like he's good at. So Ziyech will never play again. And then he's good at like just coming in and being Frank Lampard, you know? It's going to be lots of the old, yeah, so, you know, we, we almost got him in the end. But, you know, a couple of goals and we were dead. But no, seriously, we've, we've really got to stay above the relegation zone at this point. The good news is, I think Chelsea are relatively safe from relegation. So the job that Frank Lampard needed to do at Everton, no, no need to do that no more. Am I too giddy for this? Lamps. I quite like Frank Lampard. I think he seems like a lovely guy. And the few times I've seen him, I've never met him, but I've seen him in public. I thought, you look like a good man. You look like the kind of person that everyone would want at their club. You are affable. You represent the team well. You don't do any NFTs. Broadly, you're moving in the right direction. I mean, English. All of these different factors will factor into whether Chelsea go for Frank Lampard or not. And really, the real reason they're going for him is PR. Because, frankly, I think they needed a figurehead change. They needed someone who would come in and the players would go, I respect you. Graham Potter always had the questions over him. He was quite timid, is what a lot of people said. He wasn't ballsy enough. He wasn't the kind of guy who'd come out and go, yeah, we're going to win that Champions League, you know? But he did. And people thought that was out of character. So bring in a guy that people know the character of. From the outside in, it's fantastic for me. Because I can basically just look in and go, <laughs> seriously, that's brilliant. And Chelsea guys go, no, no, it is really brilliant. Yeah, no, actually, we're really happy with it. So even no matter what the results. In fact, it's a good place for it to cut his teeth. So sure, there were no immediate uh, managerial hires because Chelsea weren't really anticipating getting rid of Graham Potter. And I don't know if they really saw this coming, to be honest. But the fact that they didn't speaks volumes to the fact that they're now chatting to Frank Lampard, who, by the way, was at the game the other day, the Liverpool-Chelsea game.
Maybe in his own box, maybe in someone else's box. Probably there's a Frank Lampard box at Chelsea, right? But the fact is, with this squad of players, they seem a little Lampardy. Does that make sense? If he lines them up in the way that they're meant to be lined up, you can see them scoring. You can see Jao Felix will go, you're a legend, mate. Jao Felix didn't even play Frank Lampard. Maybe they must have played each other. So... There are lots of players in there, including Raheem Sterling, actually, who probably have trained with him as well. There's plenty of players who are going to respect Frank. Kepa must have good memories of him, being a Chelsea man. He'll come in. He'll make a difference to training. Visibly, he's out there as a, you know, a big guy. And it's only a couple of months. You know, it's a 10-game manager. It's exactly what James Alcott and I were speaking about on his podcast. The kind of guy who comes in, he can motivate the guys... He can, he can be at the face of the club and he'll play simple tactics because he knows he doesn't have long to get them into the players. So he's not going to experiment. It's not about win percentage. It's not about any of this. It's just about Chelsea saving face this season. As long as Frank Lampard gets some reasonable results, a couple of scalps and Chelsea don't really dip too far, things are good. And it's better than a faceless interim guy that means that Todd Bowley is the guy who is then always in the firing line. Of course, Lampard also won't want to be a sacrificial lamb. He is far from a mug. So whether Lampard even takes the role in the first place is a whole other gamut. But I do know for a fact that he was upset when he left Chelsea. And he'll want a chance, but almost a twist of a relationship, to try to redeem himself. It's not good to come back in for the long term. Let me just adjust my legs. It's not good to come back in for the long term. It's not good to you know, come back in and go, hey, I'm going to fix things. And especially when you know the kind of issues there are at the club. But it is good to have an Ole Gunnar Solskjaer type character at the head of it, right? Already, Todd Bowley's bringing out some of these plays. It, it is a little damning that they got rid of Graham Potter, a manager who is incredibly intelligent tactically, who probably could have gotten through to the end of the season, who probably, if it was told to play like Frank Lampard played, could have gone, it's a little fundamental, isn't it? And probably would have done something if he'd have been told, look, just bring this plane into land. But it just wasn't pleasing the Chelsea fans. And maybe this is also good the other way. Maybe Todd Bowley is saying, I hear you, Chelsea fans. I hear you. I'm in here, not just up here, all right? You guys want a certain kind of manager. And that is what we are giving you. You don't like Lampard? It's not me. It's Lampard. You don't like... His backroom staff, it's not me, it's Lampard. He's probably going to be able to encourage players in that midfield and put someone in a Lampard role. And Oh, God, I'm actually really excited right now. And I'm not quite sure why. But at the same time, where does this leave Chelsea? Do they finish higher up? Do, do they, does it give them more time to get a quality manager? Or does it show that they don't have that pull right now? Are they a bit of a poison chalice to the point where they have to go back to older managers, old interests, older people who maybe have slightly diminished their reputation since leaving Chelsea? Or maybe Chelsea helped slightly diminish their reputation. Of course, what we're forgetting is that last time Lampard was at Chelsea, we didn't know how much of a mess things were. We didn't know that when Tom they needed someone like a Thomas Tuchel to come in and bomb them because things behind the scenes were not great. So I'm kind of positive about this. I just feel neutral, but that neutrality feels so good. So yeah, I'm sure there are plenty of people out there defending Lampard's win record, which was relatively all right at Chelsea, which is better than some other guys. I'm sure there are some people out there who are saying he left too soon. This is a nice little kiss and goodbye. Hey, babe, I'm coming back to London for a couple of weeks. Let's hook up. And all that kind of thing. It was also just, we need to go down a list of names and some Lampard. Good. You still got his number? I think so. Is it dialing? Good. Hi, Frank. Yep, good. So, I think it's broadly good. If I was a Chelsea fan, I wouldn't be thrilled about it, but I would be excited. And I also think it's a good chance to, to sort of do that to the man, you know? Sort of go, oh, you know, you, don't, you didn't believe him, Frank. You can, you know, get out. Because whatever he does, if he loses, Graham Potter set him up wrong. It was too late. If he wins, that's Frank. Turns things around. And if he really wins, his mates like Rio Ferdinand on TV go, put a contract down on the table, put whatever numbers you want on it, bam, we're away. 
And that is exactly the kind of approach we need at Chelsea right now. Because that top four is getting very congested, mate. Sure, they got the Liverpool game out of the way. Sure, they got the Villa game out of the way. Games where Lampard might have tripped up. Now, all Chelsea have got to do is just land a couple of scalps. Stay up. Broadly, I actually think he'd probably do a good job. My only problem is I still don't think they have... Here's the real issue. They have a massive squad that he needs to manage, but Lampard does have, an, have any problem with alienating certain players, so that's going to be great. They have... Basically, Jao Felix in attack. I think they're probably going to have to play a false nine. Frank's got Pep Guardiola's number, right? So he can call him and go, what is it that I need to do for this, Pep? And then finally, they have a midfield that he can really get his hands around. If he puts Nenzo in the right position, if he puts a Kovacic in the right position, if he says to Conor Gallagher, hey, you're my guy. Lampard is going to come in, talk to a couple of these guys, remind them of what Chelsea represent, and then he's going to be off in the night. Back off with Christine Bleakley Lampard. Writing more kids' books. Whatever he does. Anyway, I look forward to it. Let me know how you think this finishes in the comments below. I think eighth or ninth. And that isn't a failure. If he finishes above Liverpool, it'll be gutting. But there is a real chance of that. So let's see. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll see you in a little while. Just an initial reaction. I'm looking forward to it. Much love. Bye.